We are constantly in defense of our rights of self-determination and sovereignty. Our duty is to protect that sovereignty anytime it's challenged and attacked. Dick Cheney's coming, apparently, to British Columbia on October the 22nd, allegedly to come over here for a week of fly fishing in Smithers. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to tell a special message right now to Dick Cheney. You're not welcome in this province. You're not welcome in Canada. We're going to do everything we can to mobilize. Come on, tell them we're going to mobilize you. pursuing injustice and going against the criminal class of this world. I'm a Native American activist. I'm a First Nations activist. I'm a Mohawk warrior from the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy. I'm a warrior who believes in upholding the contents of the oldest living constitution in the world known as the guy in the go with the great law. And that comes from us, the Iroquois Confederacy. This great law was brought to all of the people who come here from Europe, who came here to colonize, in the process of colonizing and stealing our land and murdering people with impunity. In the process of all this, in the time when there was a war between Canada and the United States, or one brewing between Great Britain and the United States, during that time when the so-called founding fathers of the American Revolution put together a package to develop a constitution in the U.S., the first original drafting of the American Constitution, Ben Franklin and, and the other so-called founding fathers, which to us at that time were the founding murderers of our continent. Still in all, there was a certain level of intelligence and decency to be able to recognize that this, that our guy in the Goa was the greatest constitution in the world. And at that point, the Europeans coming from England and France and from Holland and from the rest of Spain and Portugal, they realized that we had a system that was not feudalistic, monarchistic, and we had one that truly delivered the process of democracy. We had the concept of the two-thirds majority vote, which the General Assembly uses in its decision-making bodies at the United Nations level. We introduced that to our European allies, or at that point they were enemies, but we tried to become allies and make peace. They also found the whole concept of the people's referendum. Whenever bad government gets in, it gets in power, the people had the right to petition and pull those, pull those corrupt bastards out of the positions of power and bring them back, and the people had power. The whole congressional proceedings, the whole parliamentary proceedings came from the great law. Women's equality come from the great law. We were a matriarchal society. We were balanced, men and females, male and females. We were one, but we honored the women as the life givers in this creation and the caretakers of this earth. And therefore, they had equal power in government. The women imposed the chiefs because they showed enough of a balance between their own yin and yang and that they had rationale, the spiritual knowledge and political knowledge of what was good for the people. Yet if they empowered, if she empowered a chief, she also had the power to take his power and ordering the war chiefs to take his power after three warnings if he was erring for his own self-aggrandizement. So we not only just recognize a woman's right to vote, which was such a big deal in the U.S., we recognize the equal political power of women within our nations and self-governing forms. So I say this. I say this. I am 100% 
one who believes in this very beautiful democratic process that we gave to the world 700 years ago. I am one who defends the tenets of true democracy in our egalitarian societies. I am one that believes in defending against the encroachment of corruption, against the encroachment of mass murder and killing in the interest of a class of people who have gone completely out of balance with the natural laws of creation for their own greed and avarice. And that's who I am. I am a peacekeeper of the Confederacy. A warrior is a peacekeeper. And our war societies are in the Six Nations Confederacy. The war societies are there to protect the tenets of the great law. The oldest living constitution. And basically the great law is the perfect document for a nation to be self-determining, for a nation to recognize the power of its own sovereignty, for a self-determining people to be free from any colonial forces or nations. In the Six Nations, the Mohawks predominantly, we fought 40 wars with the US, with the British, with the French, with the Spanish. We fought wars and we won many of those wars. Years ago, hundreds of years ago, right up to contemporary times. We fight, we win. Because we, what we stand for is for the good of human beings. We also believe, according to the laws of the great laws, of the great laws, the tenets of the great law, that our great law, one day it was foreseen that our great law would go around the world it would be taken by uh, the capitalist class in the United States and it would be corrupted by even our great law. Our great law was the system, the Six Nations Confederacy, the, the Guyanagoa, the Iroquois system was the system that Marx and Engels used in their trustees on communism or communalism. And that was done on the base predicated on the writings of Lewis Henry Morgan, who lived amongst the Iroquois for 20 years. And when he documented that, they used that as a system that met the needs of the people and not just a class of people that had more than the rest of the people and exploited and imprisoned people in this exploitation. So, notwithstanding the political class, we were always told that one day, this system, our system, the great law, would go around the world, but it would be corrupted. Because you can't mix communityism of the great law system with capitalism. It's like water and oil. They can exist in the same spirit, but they never mesh as one. Ours is a system based on equality, not on exploitation. And this is what we guard against against the greedy elements in this foreign nations and societies. We are constantly in defense of our right to self-determination and sovereignty. Our duty is to protect that sovereignty anytime it's challenged and attacked.